Good afternoon. How are we all doing? Just thought I'd do a quick update. Appreciate I've not uploaded any videos for a little while. Partly because I've not had anything to upload. Not a lot happening, to be honest. Um, I'm in the Citroen DS3. Some of you may remember from the early videos, this is one of the first cars that I bought along with the Ford KA. Um, and we were on the borderline whether to, what do we do with it? Um, we were getting offers of sort of 800 to a thousand pound for it as for, from breakers. Um, and it owed us 1900 quid. I'll come back to the figures later. Obviously we've decided to plug on with it and do some work on it. It's now got a full advisory free MOT. Drives really well actually. We've done a lot of work on it. Uh, I've done about, I've been driving it to work and back for the last couple of weeks. Probably done 500 miles or so in it now. And yeah, just going up the way now. It's superb, drives spot on. Um, we've had it advertised for a couple of weeks, unfortunately we've had bits of interest, people saying it looks well, nice advert, all that kind of thing, but no test drives, nobody's, uh, no solid interest unfortunately. As you can see we're in fifth gear now, up to 70 mile an hour, sits on the motorway, I've been doing, I do Wakefield to Leeds to work and back every day, it's about a 20 mile journey there and back. And it, it sits lovely on motorway, it really does. Um, suspension's kind of firm enough that you can give it some round the twisty bends if you need to. But soft enough to be comfortable. It's quite a big spacious car as well, to, to say they look quite little from outside. I am quite impressed how you don't feel like you're in a small car. And same again on the motorway, you know, when I had the uh, Fiat 500, which I've got another story about, I had the 500, you know, you, the other things around you on the motorway felt bigger, but this is quite comfortable for sitting, just cruising in. Uh, yeah, the 500, the customer got in touch with me the other day about that. Um, nothing to do with us really, but she just wanted to let us know. She's only driven it a couple of times. I think she's had it a month. She's sat at uh, some traffic lights and somebody's smashed straight into the back of her. Um, which is a real shame, because that was a lovely, lovely car. Top spec, low miles. Really, really clean car. Just had a full service and the cam belt done. It's gone away. Sorry about my voice, I have got a little bit of a cold if my voice is a bit robot -y. So yeah, it's gone away to the insurers to be assessed. Hopefully she gets it back on the road. I think she might be quite lucky. It does just look like damage to the uh, tailgate. It's a big 4 before thing that's gone into the back of her, so hopefully the damage is just high up. I don't think it'll have had any, anything underneath. So hopefully she gets it fixed and gets it back on the road, but if not, we've told her to come back to us and we'll help her out. Try and find something else for her. Um, so what we're doing, what we're doing today, we're in VDS. As I've had it advertised for a couple of weeks now, two, maybe three weeks. I had a week on Facebook, didn't get any real interest. Stuck it on the auto trader. Um, again, didn't have any interest, put it on for two weeks, didn't have any interest in the first week, reduced it, still didn't have any interest. The yeah, advert's now expired. So the only place I've now got it advertised is on Facebook, Marketplace and various Facebook groups and obviously my own <coughs> Facebook page, Blue Bad Car Sales by Dan Gallivan if you're not already on it. Um, 
So yeah, the plan today is I've just spent a couple of hours giving it a good clean again. Give it a wash, give it a good back out inside. Um, gone over it with the Chromans. Done all the wheels and tyres again. My plan is to go, we're heading to a local beauty spot in Wakefield. Try and take some nice pictures. Some nice new pictures. Because I'm aware people are probably just sick and tired of seeing the same old listing getting shared now. Um, put the new car mats in, just give it a good clean and tidy everywhere anywhere. And then we advertise it, update the pictures, get get it on Facebook Marketplace and get it back on Auto Trader. Um, we are selling this car at a loss. Again, I'll come back to the figures. I've got the invoices and receipts next to me. We'll come back to that in a minute. But it's my logic is that I just want to move it on now. Yeah, I could sit on it for three months, try and get 3995 for it. Somebody will come along eventually. But <coughs> I have got people asking me for cars. There is an auction tonight where I've seen some cars that would be suitable for people but I've just not got any money to go buy new stock until I move one of these two on. So my logic is that I just need to move it on, get some money back in the pot so we can move on, progress, buy something else. Short term pain for long term gain, is that the saying? Obviously, if I had a bigger plot, um, with more cars for sale, then I'd be able to let it sit for a little bit longer at three nine nine five. But it's just necessity. I just, I just need some money back in the pot to move on and buy something else. I think that's the problem at the minute. It's just cash flow at the beginning, which I've heard high peak autos talk about before really hard when you're starting out just with a small pot you have a couple of cars all your money's tied up in in what you've got lucky that I don't have any overheads I'm still trading from home so I've not got any rent or anything to pay the cars just I just need to move stuff on so that I can buy more stock that is all Um, I'm confident that the first to see will buy as well. Like I say, it's a good looking car, it's clean and tidy inside, it drives really well now. Um, yeah, it's just a case of getting somebody to see it. Unfortunately, I don't live on a main road, so unless people see it on social media, they're not coming to see it. It is getting a lot of views on Marketplace and a lot of people friends and family have shared it for me which is appreciated but yeah it's just getting people to see it in the flesh and don't think you can park it I'm pretty sure you're not allowed to park it on a public road anymore as a trader you know I used to see cars parked outside the road all the time but I don't, I don't think you're allowed to do that anymore I don't fancy getting a fine from the council or anything like that so yeah, it's just a case of plugging on. Let's take some new photographs, let's re-advertise it, reduce the price, and see how we get on. Um, we're five minutes away from where we're going now. We'll get there, we'll have a good walk round. I'll do a walk round video, show you what we've done. And I'll show you the figures, show you the price, show you what it owes us. Here we go guys, Sandal Castle, place where dreams are made. So here it is for the S. Oh, don't like that. There we go, in focus. As you can see, looks absolutely lovely now. Stunning colour. Top spec. Number 
number plate and screws. Did them myself. New exhaust. You can see where it goes right up to the manifold down there. Paintwork is lovely. It's a lovely, lovely colour. We do have a problem on these DS's where the rust under wing mirror, I've had to do a little touch up repair there, which isn't the best, it tidies it up. If I'd not spent as much money mechanically on the car, I'd have obviously had that done properly, but I've been quoted £300 to get both doors done. Just isn't the money there to do that. Uh, again, the alloys are scruffy, could do with tidying up, but the money's just not there to do it, it's mechanically sound. It's still a good looking car. Yeah, this is the other side, look. Just a common problem on DS's. Uh, again, I'll, I'll touch that up, I'll tidy it up a little bit. Um, so what have we done? Hi, all right. I'll take you through my costs. Um, so, oh, I've got these signs made as well. I don't think I've shown you these since last time we've had these done. Personalised rhubarb car sales signs. Which we found them on eBay. And as luck happens, he messaged the guy. He lives about five doors away from me. Didn't know it. Didn't realise at all, but... Um, yeah, just total coincidence that he lives on my street. Sorry, let me flip this round just a second. There we go, you can see my ugly mug again. Pop you up there, right, so. We've had it at 4395, didn't get anything, reduced it down to 3995, which I was optimistic about. I thought that were a fair price. Um, again, didn't get anything. Um, three, we've come down to 3695. It's still here. So I'm going to put it at 3495 now. 3495, three, just. Hopefully get some interest, get some bums in seats, get some test drives um, and just get it out the door. I'm a bit disappointed with 3495 but the trouble is there's just so many cheap ones on the market. I have seen them at 2995 but what people don't appreciate is the amount of work that's gone into it. Um, you know, all the look at is age of mileage, unfortunately. Um, so on this we've had the timing chain done, we've put a new gearbox on from a lower mileage car, the, the gearbox has come from a car with 40,000 miles, we've put a new clutch and fly, <coughs> excuse me, new clutch and flywheel, new discs and pads all the way around, two new tyres on the front, new exhaust, full service and we've got a clean MOT. So we're looking at purchase price of 190480. Um safety check at £60. We had to pay £25 for the logbook. We bought this car before we had the um, before we got the trade plate. So we I've had to tax it for six months, which was £82.50. The clutch kit was £97.50. The gearbox was £390. Uh, £10 for petrol, which I've put more than that in since then because I've been using it. <coughs> £21.94 for car mats, £25.94 for touch up paint, £34.20 to advertise it on the Auto Trader, which again I'm going to have to pay to, to advertise it again. Um, £2.40 on some parcel shelf clips. The bill for my mechanics was 1350, 1350. Uh, I've also got to put a warranty on it yet. Pay for the auto trader again yet. So I've got it at 4,004 pounds and 28 pence plus the warranty is gonna be 100 pounds. So it's gonna be 441, it's gonna owe us 41 and I've got it up at 3495. 600 pound loss we're looking at, but again, 
we were getting offers of 800 to a thousand pound from breakers to scrap it so we paid 1904 for it we, we were always going to lose 900 quid on it so if i can get 3495 yeah it's a loss but it, it's not as much as what it would have been to break it is my my theorem my logic the only downside to that is we have got two thousand pound you know purchase price and two thousand pound in repairs tied up in it so we have got a lot of money tied up in it if we had scrapped it we could have had a thousand pound plus the two thousand pound that i'd i've put into it in repairs so we, we could have had three thousand pound there and just moved on and bought something else so ticks are one half a dozen of the other and all that uh, right, I'm going to stop wittering on now, that's the DS, you know what we've done with it, you've had a good look at it, I'm going to take some pictures now um, and get it on the old auto trader because people are looking at me like I am a nutter, a bike's just pulled up behind me, just where I want to be taking photographs, but hey ho, so I'm going to move when I start snapping away, thanks guys, thanks for tuning in, please like and subscribe, share my channel if you can. Um, and I'll update you further with anything else that we do. Thanks for watching. Keep safe.